So I've said it before, and if you keep up with this channel weekly, then you know I have a slower, more thought-intensive view on news, pop culture, and events. If you notice, I'm not usually one who's inclined to release a video a day or two after something's illuminated my radar. My process is to let the dust settle a bit and get a clearer picture, gauge reactions. At least that way I have time to inform myself and generally get up to speed. Now, it didn't take much mulling over to notice something as of late. So quickly, the gun debate. It's another long-standing issue that has fuel thrown on the fire every time there's a shooting, at least one that ends up making national headlines. Whether we're talking mass shootings like Vegas, Parkland, and Orlando, or racially charged shootings like Trayvon Martin, Fernando Castile, and Stephen Clark, all just to name a few, controversies are sure to follow. And that's really what we've been seeing play out lately on news, social media. Racial tension and divide are instigated by psychological campaigns as well as civil divide and conquer techniques stemming from the overall firearm debacle. Now, of course, we won't stay on this topic for long since YouTube is quick to stifle alternatives to official narratives, especially on hot button issues like the gun debate. In any case, if you follow pop culture or trends, even if you don't, you still probably recognize some of this imagery. These are scenes from Donald Glover's, aka Childish Gambino's music video, This Is America. It's an intentionally provocative video with almost 100 million views in its first week of release with reaction videos and everything. Let me just say a few things before we dive in. Understanding that this is a music video is a given, but also understanding that there's more to it than that, that there's an underlying message, is pivotal. A lot can be expressed through art, at least that's what they're calling it, whether it's strictly creative, political, or some combination of the two. That being said, I think it's important to note the difference between arts or making a statement and inflaming vitreous rhetoric. I'm not going to assign labels here and perhaps take this next part with a grain of salt, but we are talking about the same guy sporting this all-seeing eye luminous pyramid. If you know anything about the camps this symbol is giving homage to, then you know we're talking about a network of dubious individuals with agenda. If you think this is just the latest in fashion, you've got some research to do. Anyway, these guys belong to a club, and I think Donald Glover's artistic expression did exactly what it was intended to do. This is America. Don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping now. Um, whoa. Okay. All right. This is America. Black on black violence right there. I don't know if that's what we're looking at. And then they come and pull his body out. Wow. I haven't been able to understand any words yet, really. Besides, this is America. Yeah. This is America. Don't catch you slipping now. Like Kanye West, right? Similar premise in terms of impact. We'll get to that. In an interview with TMZ, which also racked up millions of views, Kanye loosely addressed questions asked by the host and stirred up the racial pot with his statement that slavery was a choice. You know, um, when you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years, that sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? You know, like, it's like we're, we're mentally in prison. I like the word prison because slavery goes di too, too direct to the uh, idea of blacks. It's like slavery, Holocaust, Holocaust Jews. Uh, now, was this art and making a statement? I don't know what this man has been through, what's going on in his head, his life. It's not my call, although I'm sure many fanatics out there will certainly clarify things. Regardless of what he meant by it, because honestly, I don't even think he knew what he was saying in his interview, it triggered people. There were even celeb reaction videos to this as well. Opioids. Wow. Hold up, y'all. This nigga Kanye got like <laughs> <laughs> I turn on my TV today and Kanye is on TMZ and I don't get it. I'm lost, you know. It's like at what point are we gonna say he, he's definitely out of his mind, like like for real, for real, like there's another gear in there. Given there was truth lined in what he was saying, you guys have got to know when you're being played. Oh, you just don't get it. These guys are woke. They're trying to woke others. I don't buy it. These people have fan bases, followers, voting fan bases and followers, sometimes millions. You have to know there are political implications there. I mean, remember when President Donald Trump gave a nod to Kanye West during his NRA speech? That followed his TMZ interview and his critically acclaimed photo gone viral. What I'm getting at is that we don't realize the ways we can and are being mentally reconfigured to accept a new order of things. 
guns, race, these issues are kept alive by momentum behind change, yes, but within those circles are agents with something else entirely in mind. What we're seeing is this momentum for change being usurped and redirected to serve as a catalyst for civil discord. We're talking about bringing order out of chaos. Try not to take what I'm saying out of context. The normalization of arresting imagery, asserting nonsensical gibberish leavened with what people want to hear and calling it art, disregarding facts and supplanting logic with sentiment has literally catapulted us into the age of anything goes. I'm not accusing these men of being orchestrators. I believe they're on a string, whether they know it or not, though victims would probably be more accurate. These people who have been promoting this agenda, likely not knowing the true consequences, after years are finally starting to see it manifest, and honestly, I think some of them either want out or are frightened by its fruition. But let me try to rein this in. Whether it's news, an interview, or music video, these can be used altruistically, yes, but also as tools to sow seeds of division, incite controversy, and conflict. Such tools can be used strategically to artificially foment and inflate hostilities. This puts the public in a malleable state of mind where our judgment becomes more fluid. That pliability is necessary to easily submit to the conformity required by subsequent consequences. In a nutshell, we're talking about the Hegelian dialectic. Without getting too technical, Hegel's dialectic can be understood simply. You cause a problem and keep the ball rolling until the desired party is pining for a solution to which you've already had. If, for example, corporations wanted to mandate citizens to have, say, cell phones, some may become suspicious or confrontational by having that thrust upon them. But make that device attractive and seductive and take away the mandate, people are now lining up for it. Just apply that to government. Cause a problem, say, through state-sponsored domestic operations, maintain momentum through pop culture, social media, and propaganda, utilizing influential idols while doing so until citizens demand a solution. An arbitrative or legislative solution, no doubt, certain officials just so happen to have. Now, do that during world events, leading up to election cycles, or after a tragedy, and you've essentially got the United States. If you're paying attention, nothing is really as it seems, and the times are revealing themselves. Time's up, the end is near, this is America. Something you should know.